Piety is rendered into one's restriction from sin. Philosophically and religiously speaking, most sin originate from wrath and lust. However, fasting brings the extravagance of this instinct under control, which consequently decreases corruption and increases piety. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to an episode live from Karbala with me, your host Ahmad Ali, in this Ramadan series. Uh, we have entered the month of Allah, the sacred month of Ramadan, the sacred month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has filled this month with mercy, blessings, forgiveness, and all of his bounties. Uh, but I am honored to host uh, these episodes with my dear guest, Sayyid Hussain Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, as I mentioned, we have entered the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, what better way to host you uh, in a program like this other than the month of Ramadan in the holy city of Karbala. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, Sayyidina, today we witnessed something very tragic. Uh, a few hours ago, uh, a car bomb uh, went off. And we do see that uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, numerously mentions that this month, is the month of tranquility and mercy. So, I mean, why do we see that? Shouldn't people focus on, uh, you know, this, their spiritual enhancement instead of focusing on, uh, you know, stuff like this? It doesn't make any sense in the month of Ramadan. Mid daylight, a bomb goes off. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all of my dear brothers and sisters and wish them a Ramadan Mubarak, insha'Allah. Mm -hmm. Insha'Allah. A Ramadan full of blessings, full of forgiveness and mercy. Insha'Allah. And peace for all Muslims around the globe. Today, unfortunately, Karbala witnessed another tragedy. Karbala la zilti karban wa bala. Yes. Every day is a new tragedy in Karbala. And today, once again, Karbala was targeted by the same people who initiated the attack in Karbala 14 centuries ago, and yeah. Fariban Hassan alayhi salam. That day it was the army of Yazid. Today it's the army of Yazid. Yes. But in a different disguise, using instead of swords and spears, today they're using car bombs yeah. and suicide bombers. Yes. Why? Only to fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fight Islam, and to fight the holy household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What crime have the people of Karbala committed? What have they done? Innocent people, civilians. I know children that were injured today. Yes. What crime have they committed? I mean, we have to talk about this shortly to go into our main topic insha'Allah uh, but uh, once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that the person who dies in the month of Ramadan fasting dies as a martyr so we do know alhamdulillah rabbil alameen thanks to Allah that the people who do who did uh, die today are considered as martyrs Absolutely. in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we ask Absolutely. Allah to uh, grant their families and their relatives tranquility and patience uh, in this uh, for this tragic uh, event and, and they should know that their victims their lo their loved ones are with Imam Hussein definitely Islam definitely yes this evening inshallah inshallah uh, so Sayyidina uh, for the sake of uh, tonight's uh, topic as we have entered the month of Ramadan uh, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions various verses within the whole Quran that speak about Ramadan and why Ramadan uh, the jurisprudence as well as the significance uh, of Ramadan. So can you briefly uh, discuss and explain those verses? Uh, first of all, uh, for, the, for, uh, you know, for the sake of our dear viewers to know that mm -hmm. this year we are continuing the series that we began last year. Last year, yes. Uh, entitled In the Quran, mm -hmm. in which we choose various topics in the Quran that are discussed in the Quran and we discuss them every night. Mm -hmm. Uh, last year we discussed orphans in the Quran, the sanctity of human life in the Quran, mm -hmm. humiliation in the Quran, humility in the Quran. Mm -hmm. So tonight, because today was the beginning of the month of Ramadan, uh, the topic that I've chosen is the, 
the holy month of Ramadan in the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. What does the Quran say about the month of Ramadan? We see that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah SWT remembers, uh, mentions, mm -hmm. I apologize, Allah mentions the month of fasting in Ramadan in three verses, three consecutive verses. Mm -hmm. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام O you who believe fasting has been prescribed upon you كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون mm -hmm. the same way that it was prescribed to the people before you Christians, Jews, possibly other nations yes. the same way that fasting was prescribed upon them it was mandatory upon them to fast it's, upon, it's mandatory upon us to fast. Now, was their fasting exactly like our fasting? That's mm -hmm. another topic. Yeah. Was it mm -hmm. exactly 30 days? Uh, was it more? Was it less? Was it from eating and drinking? Was it from something else? I don't know. Mm -hmm. but it, they had a form of siyam. Yes. They have a form of siyam. Mm -hmm. So that you may be pious. And inshallah, I know that we will talk about that more. Definitely, anyway. inshallah. The, 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 the sole purpose... A fasting is put into piety so that humans may reach piety. Ayyam and ma'adudat, only a couple of days. The Quran is trying to tell people that, you know, don't get anxious, yeah. uh, don't worry, it's not, it's not a big deal, it's yeah. not a full year, it's only 30 days. It's only 30 days. Or less. Ayyam and ma'adudat. Uh, people seem to make it a big deal. 30 days of not eating and not drinking. Wow. You know, there's a hadith that says if people knew the blessings that are in the month of Ramadan, yes, they 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 would wish that the whole year, the year was, was Ramadan, Ramadan, yeah, and that the whole year they were fasting. Mm -hmm. And then the verse shows Allah's mercy mm -hmm. and how Islam is uh, easy going. You can't fast; it's difficult for you to fast. You don't have to fast. It's not mandatory upon everyone to fast. There are some people that are. Uh, excluded. There are some exceptions. Yes. If you are traveling or if you are sick, if you're ill, then you may fast some other days after the month of Ramadan. Fast. And for those that uh, cannot fast because they're too old, the elderly. Those that are too old and have no uh, hope of recovering. Of course, when, when you get older, Definitely. you're not going to become younger. Definitely. So if you can't fast now, most likely you're not going to be able to fast in the coming years. That's fine as well. Islam does not order even those that cannot fast to fast. No. Fidyatun ta'amu miskin. If you can't fast, instead, feed someone who is poor. Yes. However, if the elderly can fast, that's better than, mm -hmm. better for them. If they did fast and they have the ability to fast, it's better for them. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Ramadan. And immediately Ramadan is associated with something very important. Yes. الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. The month in which the Quran was revealed in. And what is the Quran? هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. A book of guidance. Yes. For all people. وبينات من الهدى. And it has signs of of guidance. والفرقان. والفرقان. That which Separates. Uh, separates between what is good and what is evil, yes. what takes people to heaven and what takes people to hell. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمُ He who witnesses the month, witnesses the month meaning he who witnesses the month. He who witnesses the beginning of the month. Yes. And of course this is a controversial topic among that scholars that who, who witnesses the month? You have to witness the moon in your city or if someone sees the moon in another city that's enough or someone who sees the moon in another country yeah. that's enough this is a, a controversial topic it is scholars most, have yeah. various various opinions mm -hmm. and this shows that ijtihad is open 
and yeah. uh, the Quran and narrations are open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. We don't have dogma, one opinion. No, we have various no, opinions. Definitely. Woman can a again, the Quran emphasizes that, yeah. is ill, or ala suffering, fadatum min ayam and ukhar. Who is he who is ill, or he who is traveling, he may fast some other days. Min ayam and ukhar, you read Allah who become a yus, what I read to become a yus. Allah wants that which is easy for you. Yeah, he wants Allah, ease in your life. Allah wants ease for you. Allah does not want difficulty. Yeah. Someone who's ill, someone, for example, who's diabetic or hasn't an illness in his kidneys and has to take medication every day or other kinds of illnesses Islam doesn't say you have to fast Islam Definitely. says if you can't fast, don't fast make it up on the days that you're healthy this is a general law in Islam Islam is not a hard, hard religion Definitely. some people they make it harder on themselves yeah. Islam is not a hard religion and can and finish the month to commit al meaning finish the month, fast for thirty days. Or to Allah ala mahadakum and so that you may glorify Allah for what He has guided you. Wallaqum tashkurun and so that you may be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was a general uh, this was a general overview and explanation over the verses that address the month of Ramadan in the Holy Quran. No, I'm Hassan uh, Tabsayna. That was actually very nice because uh, I would like to focus on the first verse which talks about piety, um, so that you may become pious. Uh, with the same tone of emphasis, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the, in, in the, the second and the third verse. Uh, the first verse is somewhat important because uh, fasting tends to spiritually and materially increase piety and unity in oneself um, as one scholar says uh, from the point of various effects that fasting may spiritually and materially enhance the unity and piety of a man as it has different dimensions that can be discussed the ethical dimension that I want to focus on today uh, which is piety we find that fasting within the month of Ramadan um, has a very significant role to play in one's life when it comes to piety. We see Al-Bayt uh, emphasizing on this as well. Um, how does Ramadan cultivate uh, piety within one's life? You see, um, once in a while human beings need discipline. Yes. They need uh, a crash course. Mm -hmm. It's just like, uh, you know, some professionals for example, police officers. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, they uh, they go to into a you know a a, a crash course. Um, they they take them away for a month mm -hmm. to discipline them. Yes. To put them into certain classes, physical fitness. Why? Because they need it. They need it. They they need that one month for them to 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 be disciplined. Um, we human beings, we need that discipline. Mm -hmm. We need that one month out of the year. Definitely. To be disciplined. We need that immunization shot. Yes. Once a year during flu season, you usually during, uh, during autumn, some people take the flu shot. Yeah. Because the flu is going to come, so they take a shot to give them immunity. Human beings take care of themselves materialistically. They take care of their bodies. But this spirit... It also needs the Definitely. soul. Also needs a crash course. Definitely. It also needs a discipline. Mm -hmm. It also needs a a shot. A shot. Uh, yeah. This shot is called the month of Ramadan. كتب عليكم الصيام وكما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. So that you may be pious. Now, how how is it? How is it that fasting can get us to be more pious? You see, when we fast. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to abstain from the things that we need the most. The things that we can't live with, without. Mm -hmm. We can't live without. Mm -hmm. Things that we crave the most. And that's eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. And for some it's smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, marital relations. Yes. Things that are, are put into humans biologically. We need to eat. We need to drink. We need those relations. Mm -hmm. 
Some people need to smoke. These are things that people do every day. They eat and they drink. They wake up eating. They sleep eating yeah. before they sleep eating. Islam says, that's fine. But during the day, you abstain from food. From dawn, from fajr, till sunset, you abstain from eating and drinking. And you abstain from the, thing that, from the things that you need the most, which is eating and drinking. This gives you, this gives you a, uh, a sense of victory. Over what? Over your nafs. Mm -hmm. Because there is nothing that we desire more, more than eating and drinking. Yes. If you can abstain from eating and drinking from morning till night, that means you fought over your nafs. Mm -hmm. Over something that is halal. Yeah. Eating and drinking is not haram throughout Definitely. the year. Definitely. Wa -shrabu mm -hmm. wa la mm -hmm. Eating is not forbidden. Yes, there are some things that are forbidden to eat. There are yeah. some things that are forbidden to drink. Mm -hmm. But eating in itself is not forbidden. Mm -hmm. Drinking itself is not forbidden. If we can abstain from things that are halal, number one, and things that we need the most in our lives, after the month of Ramadan, if we want to abstain from gossiping, from ghiba, which is haram, and we don't need it in our lives, we, we can definitely live without gossiping and backbiting. Definitely. But we can't live without eating and drinking. We can definitely live without music in our lives. But we can't live without eating and drinking. If we can stay away from eating and drinking for 12 hours, 15 hours, in some countries 20 hours. 20 hours, yeah. We can definitely stay away from music. Definitely. That This is the point. Wow. This is the point. That if you could do this... You, if you could do the harder, if you could do the harder task, you could do the easier task. Mm -hmm. I usually give this example in my lectures. I tell young men mm -hmm. that if you can bench press, if you go to the gym and you can bench press 150 pounds, mm -hmm. can you bench press 100 pounds? Of course. Of course. Because if you've done the more difficult task, then you can the, do the easier the task. Easier is if you can run without a break for one hour. Can you run without a break for 30 minutes? Of course. Because you, you've done the difficult task. Yes. And Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trains us to do the difficult task. Not eat and not drink. For so many given hours. Mm -hmm. 15 hours, 20 hours, more or less. If we can do away with not eating and not drinking, we've overcome the snaps. Definitely. We've trained the snaps. We've learned to say no to the things that we need the most. When it comes to the things that we need, we don't need the most. It's yeah. easy. It'll be easier to say that. Definitely. This is where لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ comes in. And that's actually very nice because uh, the quote I began with um, is from al kulaini in his book Al-Kafi. Uh, he states this uh, from one of the Imams. Uh, I can't remember which Imam. Uh, which says if someone, uh, you know, brings that instinct uh, of his, whether, you know, uh, eating, drinking, uh, especially sin you know people are, are, are sinful so if someone tries and the examples you brought are very beautiful um, but if he brings that into uh, under control then corruption becomes very easy to overcome and piety will increase and that's very nice to uh, to handle that within the month of Ramadan T to add to that yes when we don't eat and we don't drink maybe the first couple of hours you're doing fine mm-hmm but towards midday, towards the afternoon, when it gets very hot, it gets hot, and you get hungry, immediately start feeling weak. Yeah, something normal. Even if you don't feel hungry, but you start feeling weak. Mm -hmm. You can't go and run for an hour when you're fasting. Yeah, it'll be hard. Maybe you can, but it'll be hard. Mm -hmm. Towards 5 p.m., 6 p.m., you know, after fasting for for 12 hours, 13 hours, you're out of energy. Mm -hmm. Your body lacks sugar that means you don't have energy that state of feeling weak it's a reminder that we human beings are weak yeah we're nothing if we don't have one meal that lunch or that breakfast we're weak we can't do anything we have to lie in bed i can barely talk i can barely walk mm -hmm. i don't have that energy this reminds me that I'm so weak. 
Yeah. And I'm I'm in need of the one that is all powerful. Wow. We need that reminder. Definitely. Sometimes human beings they don't feel that weakness. They're healthy, they eat, they're full of energy, they go, they talk, they speak, they they hurt people, they oppress people, they steal people's money, they they feel all powerful. They haven't felt the weakness. During Ramadan, when we don't eat, we feel that weakness. We feel that need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely. Ya yuhannas, antumul fuqara'u ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ghani. Allah is the all-powerful, and we're, we're the ones that are weak. We feel that in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. And this will, this sense of weakness, and that we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will make us more pious. Mm -hmm. If I'm this weak, shouldn't I be obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Definitely. If I can't protect myself, if I can't defend myself, tomorrow I'll be thrown in hellfire. Definitely. I mean, because of my actions. Mind, shouldn't yeah. I abstain from those sins that might throw me into hellfire? Definitely. This body is weak. And it can't handle important. hellfire. Mm -hmm. And that's what's important within the month of Ramadan. We need to ponder upon our weaknesses to actually either become stronger or hold on to the one who is strong. But inshallah, we'll continue the discussion after the break. Sayyidina, uh, so respected viewers, uh, was a very nice introduction uh, to the month of Ramadan with my dear guest. Uh, so stay tuned after the episode uh, for we, inshallah, will continue our discussion Ramadan in the Quran. Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, enjoyed that short report. Uh, but before the break, we talked about how Ramadan and fasting cultivates uh, piety within one's life. Uh, also, we talked about the verses within the Holy Quran that mention uh, the sacred month of Ramadan. But back to the discussion with my dear guest and esteemed guest, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Welcome back, Sayyidna. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Sayyidna, uh, I would like to move on to a different topic right now, uh, which is... Uh, the month of Ramadan is the month where uh, the Quran was revealed upon our beloved master, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his holy household. In Surah Al-Isra, I would like to mention this verse. And it is a Quran which we have revealed in portions, so you may read it to the people by slow degrees. Uh, I don't know if the transi translation is, is full right here. Uh, but we see that the Quran is translated, uh, sorry, revealed portions to the Prophet. So... The verse you mentioned earlier in the uh, episode it says that we have revealed the Quran. So is it the whole Quran? How was the Quran revealed? And didn't the revelation process take approximately 23 years? Um, the Quran states regarding the month of Ramadan, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانِ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Allah SWT has revealed the Quran in the month of Ramadan. However, at the same time, we know that the Qur'an was revealed into stages. Mm -hmm. The first verse that was revealed, according to historians and scholars of tafsir, that the first uh, verse that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Aqra, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Aqra, Aqra, Bismi Rabbika al-Ladhi khalaq, khalaq al-Insana min alaq, Aqra, wa Rabbika al-Akram, al-Ladhi, this was the fir first verses. Mm -hmm. The last verses we believed that were revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiyatu lakum al-islama deena Either this or Surah Al-Ma'idah mm -hmm. in its entire form was revealed. The final chapter revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mm -hmm. So, and from 
the day of Iqra' Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khilaf, the first revelation, till the last revelation, this was approximately a period of 23 years. Mm -hmm. We know this. But at the same time, the Quran says that the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. How, how, how do we put this? Yeah. How do we put this together? Scholars say we have two kinds of revelations. We have uh, Inzal and we have Tanzil. Mm -hmm. Inzal is one revelation altogether. At one time, Tanzil is revelation over a period, period of time. time. Mm -hmm. What happened during Ramadan, during Laylatul Qadr, is Inzal. The entire Quran revealed at once. Mm -hmm. Tanzil is what happened historically. What well, began three. from Aqra uh, Bismi Rabbi Kaladi Khalaq all the way till. Now, some might ask, what, what's the difference between Inzal and Tanzil? Mm -hmm. If the Quran was revealed all at the same time during Ramadan mm -hmm. and on Laylatul Qad, what is the need to have it revealed again? 23 years. For 23 years, right? Mm -hmm. If we have Inzal, why Tanzil? Mm -hmm. And if we have Tanzil, why Inzal? Here, scholars have given couple of explanations. explanations one of the most you know logical explanations mm -hmm. is that during the Inzal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran but didn't give Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi the complete knowledge of the Quran mm -hmm. he gave him a general outline of what the Quran is about and then during those 23 years, the details were given. The mm -hmm. details were given. This is similar to a college course. You go during the first day. They give you the course outline. They give you a syllabus. Yes. Yeah, or a course outline. Mm -hmm. They tell you that this is what we're going to take during the semester. Yes. Week one, week two, week three, week four, week five. These are the examinations. This is what you're going to have to read. Wow. This is what you're going to take. So during the first day of the course, you get a good idea of what's going to happen during the semester. But you don't have all the details. Definitely. And then after that, as you go into the class, as you go into the course, week by week, you start receiving details. Of the books, of the information, of the events, if it was a historical, if it was a history class, if it was regarding scripture, you start studying the scripture, book by book page by page, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this theory is s supported by a verse which states that first his verses were revealed in a general in a general term, a general outline mm -hmm. And then the, t the details were given. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, what's the purpose? So that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has a general idea, of what's idea regarding the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. He's not ignorant of the Qur'an. In fact, Rasulullah was... He had knowledge so that Rasulullah would have knowledge of the Qur'an before it's even revealed. So that, for example, some incident would take place, Rasulullah would know that a verse will be revealed regarding that incident. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's delivering the message. How could he be ignorant? He can't be on the same level as his companions. Definitely. Just like they have no clue, they're clueless about the Quran. Rasulullah can't be clueless. Definitely. He should know. And proof. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had knowledge of the Qur'an, even if it was limited knowledge, before its, its uh, revelation at Tanzil, at various events. But he had knowledge of the Inzal, 
proof of that mm-hmm. is that the Quran says وَلَا تَعْجَلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ wow. Don't say the verse before, it re- before it's revealed to you. How would he know? Yeah. That means he has knowledge of it. Definitely. He has knowledge of the verse. وَلَا تَعْجَلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ Don't say it before it's even revealed. Wait for the revelation to come and then deliver the message, deliver the verse. Don't rush. Don't rush. Mm-hmm. So this is the difference between Inzal, which occurs during the month of Ramadan, and Tanzil, which occurred throughout a period of 23 years. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a very nice breakdown because some think that the Quran, this verse and the verses you mentioned contradict themselves with saying that, you know, how did it take 23 years when in the, it says tenz, Inzal um, and, you know, in Ramadan. So somewhat uh, contradictory, but a uh, very beautiful breakdown. Uh, but uh, to move on to another yet related uh, topic, uh, which is the importance of Ramadan and why it's different from the other months. We see Prophet Muhammad uh, saying in the last sermon, last, last Friday, uh, before the month of Ramadan, Sha'ban, uh, he gives to his companions uh, commands and prepares them uh, for welcoming the month of Ramadan. He says, O oh people, Allah's month has approached you filled with blessings, mercy, and forgiveness. It is the month which Allah regards as the best of all months. Its days are the holiest days in the sight of Allah. Its nights are the best nights and its hours are the best hours. From this portion of the sermon, the question is raised is that why is the month of Ramadan different from the rest of the months? How is it better? Ramadan, the month of Ramadan rather, is um, is a blessed month, no doubt about it. Shahrun du'itum fihi ila ziyafatillah. This is a month in which we are guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other months, we're not, we don't yeah, have... We're not invited? <laughs> <laughs> we are invited, but this is a special kind of invitation. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's a general invitation, sometimes there's, there's a specific a VIP invitation. invitation yeah. A VIP invitation. This is the kind of invitation that we received during the month of Ramadan. شَهَرٌ دُعِيتُمْ فِيهِ إِلَىٰ ضِيَافَةِ اللَّهِ وَجُعِلْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ And مِنْ أَهْلِ كَرَامَةِ اللَّهِ We're honored. We're taken care of in this month. To the point, how, how is Ramadan better than all the other months? Mm-hmm. What makes it different? أَنْفَاسُكُمْ فِيهِ تَسْبِيحِ wow. You breathe, inhale and exhale. You're receiving the word of someone who is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, holding a subhan and remembering Allah. وَنَوْمُكُمْ فِيهِ عِبَادًا You sleep, this is considered as a worship, a form of worship. Wow. Allah is spoiling us, spoiling us. There's some people that love to sleep. He says, that's fine, sleep, sleep. and you'll be rewarded for it. You're considered worshipping in this month. Wow. Sleep. وَنَوْمُكُمْ فِيهِ عِبَادًا وَعَمَلَكُمْ فِيهِ مَقْبُولٌ Our actions... You know, a lot of times when we perform a deed, we don't know. Is it accepted? Is it not accepted? Yeah. Did I do it sincerely to Allah? For Allah, did I not do it sincerely? Is it accepted or not? I don't know. But in, but in, th- in the month of Ramadan, I know that our, our, our deeds and our actions are accepted. Amalikum fi maqbool. Wa du'a'akum fihi mustajab. Your du'a is answered in this month. Annahu shahrun... ليالي هي أفضل الليالي. Yes. It's best or the best of nights. وأيامه أفضل الأيام. وساعاته أفضل الساعات. It's hours or the best of hours. It's days or the best of days. It's nights or the best of nights. And then we see that this month, some of the part of its blessings. ومن تلا فيه آية كان كمن ختم القرآن في غيره من الشهور. Wow. He who recites a verse, just one verse, in the holy month of Ramadan, he will be rewarded, the reward of reciting the entire Qur'an in other, in other months. That's a just big one deal. verse. Just one verse. That's the difference between this month and all the other months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is as if, you know, you know uh, in some countries, during certain holidays, uh, their sales. Yeah. For example, uh, in, in the United States. Boxing Day. Uh, that's that's in, in the United Kingdom. In the United States, 
the, uh, during Thanksgiving. Oh yeah. Thanksgiving is on a usually on a four day weekend. Mm -hmm. The Friday is called Black Friday. Black Friday. Everything goes fifty percent off, forty percent off. There's discounts. Mm -hmm. There's sales. Why to encourage people to to buy shop from them to come and shop. In the month of Ramadan, it's a sale. There's a major sale. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says that this prayer that usually has this reward in the month of Ramadan the, you'll be rewarded a hundred times more. The verse that you'll be ordinarily rewarded this amount in the month of Ramadan it's this wow. much. Fasting is this much. Breaking someone's fast is this much. Imagine the hadith says if you break someone's fast and we encourage brothers and sisters to break someone's fast. You don't have to break someone's fast by inviting people to their to your home and having a fe feast and and spending a lot of money. No, give someone a cup of water. You broke their fast. Wow. Give someone half of a date. Rasulullah says, nara walaw bi min tam. Wow. Half of a date. Give it to someone. Let him break his fast. You've achieved a lot, a lot of rewards. Wow. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives us extra credit that. It's as if this is what Allah is trying to say to us. That I know you've slacked off all year long. Yes. You've missed your prayers. You haven't recited Quran. You haven't fed the poor. You haven't helped any orphans. You haven't done that all year long. But guess what? I'm giving you an opportunity to make up for that. Wow. Make up for those lost times. Ramadan, I mean... You've slacked off for 11 months. But there's another month where you can make up for all that slacking off. Come. Come to me. I'm wow. all forgiving. Wow. I'll give you a lot of rewards. I have so much to give you. Why? To encourage people to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show His servants how generous He is. What a courteous host He is for the people. But the question is, will we take advantage of it? Well, will we? One day has already passed from the month of Ramadan. 29 days are left or 28 days. Mm -hmm. How will we use this month? That is the question. It's up to us. I mean... Uh, to use the month, of course, you have to use it wisely and uh, to you know, beseech Allah through minimal actions. I mean, sleeping as an act of worship, when you exhale and inhale, is uh, considered as you uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's actually somewhat unbelievable when it comes to our minds. And it's unfortunate to see that some people, even during the month of Ramadan, they tend to uh, neglect those things but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you mentioned he's giving us opportunity after opportunity to, to return to him Imam Ali alayhi salam asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in that sermon mm -hmm. he told him Ya Rasulullah what is the best deed in the month of Ramadan there's helping the poor yeah. there's fasting there's worshipping all night there's prayers during the month of Ramadan there's mm -hmm. dua there's so many things but what what is the best of all of these deeds Rasulullah told him, Al kaf an maharam illa. Staying away from sins. Behaving. Allah wants you to behave. If you behave, that's the best thing that you could do. Al kaf an maharam illa. Ramadan is a special month. Don't treat Ramadan, I, and I speak for myself first, we should, not, we should not treat Ramadan like. As a regular month. As a regular month. Mm -hmm. A hadith says, La yakun yawmu sawmika ka yawmi fatrak. A day that you're fasting should not be equal to a day in which you're not fasting. A day in which you're not fasting, you, ha you behave in a certain way. The day that you're fasting should not be the same way. Definitely. If you don't care about what you listen to and what you watch and what you say and what you do and what you eat while you're fasting, pay attention. Definitely. It's not just about not eating and not drinking. Mm -hmm. That's the least part. Let that day be different. Let people notice that. You know, when... We lose someone. Our attitude changes, right? Definitely. We don't joke around. We don't laugh. We don't smile. Why? Because, because we've lost we're someone. We're hurt. So even if we're not wearing black, someone who sees us will immediately recognize that we're different. The month of Ramadan should be the same. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying we should be sad. No, definitely. The same way that we've lost someone. No. In Ramadan, we don't have to be sad. But we should be different in our mm -hmm. behavior, in the things we say in getting angry in the use of profanity Definitely. in the use of harsh words مَنْ حَسَّنَ مِنْكُمْ خُلَقَهُ فِي هَذَا الشَّهْرِ 
كان له جوازا على الصلاة. Wow. He who fixes his akhlaq. This is one of the goals of Ramadan. This is one of the goals of Ramadan. Some people, you ask them, what's your goal in the month of Ramadan? I want to lose 10, 10 pounds. pounds. <laughs> I want to lose 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. For these people, that, that's the goal. That's the goal. Rasulullah says, Man hassana minkum khulaquhu. He who can fix his akhlaq, improve his akhlaq, not getting angry with your wife, with your husband, with your children, who, who have needs, who, who nag when they're, when they're sleepy, when they're hungry, with, with your neighbor, with your co-worker, while you're driving, someone cuts you off. Yeah. I think this is a true test in Ramadan. Definitely. Why? Because when we're not eating and we're not drinking and we're low on so energy, get frustrated. we get frustrated and we become very naggy. Definitely. People, when they're hungry, usually mm -hmm. they're feisty, uh, they're out of patience, they're naggy, they lose control of their anger. This is the true test. Wow. Can you control yourself? Even when you're hungry and Hopefully when you're thirsty? Hopefully we can. This is, this is a true test. Mm -hmm. And here... One will see, did he benefit from Ramadan or not? Some people, they'll, they'll get on the scale and to see how many pounds they've lost. This is not, this is not the correct measurement yeah. to see if you benefited from Ramadan or not. The correct measurement is to see, did you gain patience? Yes. Did you improve your akhlaq? Mm -hmm. Do you still snap and get angry? Or were you able to control yourself? This is the true measurement of benefiting from the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. That was actually very beautiful to, to put it in a way like that because some people actually tend to uh, get more frustrated. Even if someone doesn't get frustrated the whole year, in the month of Ramadan when they get hungry and then when they get thirsty and think that there's, wow, there's seven more hours to go until I break my fast, they get frustrated with that and someone cuts him off on the street or his child, you know, screams or yells in the house or his wife breaks something. They tend to, you know, snap and start yelling. So it's actually a test. Uh, for us in the month of Ramadan. It's discipline. It's discipline. Definitely. We're, di discipline. we're disciplining ourselves. We're definitely disciplining ourselves through not eating and not drinking mm -hmm. and by controlling ourselves. Definitely. Uh, not eating and not drinking, this is the outer por outer portion. Not getting angry, that's the inner portion. That's the inner. And that's actually very nice. But uh, I want to conclude with a question that uh, a lot of people tend to uh, ask us is that have scholars come to the conclusion is that why Ramadan is different from the other months? What's, what's so special? I know that we've uh, mentioned various narrations that the days are the best days. Why are the, its days and its nights the best nights and days? Well, Ramadan, f first of all, Ramadan is one of the names of Allah. Mm -hmm. And it has a, a spiritual essence. It has a spiritual significance. Where does that spiritual significance exactly come from? Allahu Alam. But we feel it. Mm -hmm. As soon as Ramadan approaches, you feel there's a different, there's a different vibe going on in the air. Yes. Even people are different. Definitely. People that are, uh, you know, usually under the mood, they don't, they're not in a good mood. Under the weather, you see them smiling. Mm -hmm. They're happy. It's a joyous month. People that are usually stingy and greedy. In the month of Ramadan, they tend to be generous, very generous welcoming. Yeah. They welcome to people to their homes. They're, they're, they're generous with the people. It has a spiritual significance. Where does it come exactly come from? Allahu Akbar. And that's, I think that's the answer. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, there's some stuff that we don't know, but uh, Prophet Muhammad puts it very beautifully in the sermon, which he says, it's the month of Allah, not, you know, any regular month. Uh, so Sayyidina, I would like to thank you for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow His mercy, blessings and forgiveness upon you and upon your family. Ajma'in uh, insha'Allah. Uh, respected viewers, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. It's very important to uh, learn and touch upon uh, the points that uh, my esteemed guest Sayyid Hussain Qazwini mentioned is that Ramadan is the month of discipline. Uh, so we may reach uh, a state to become pure and pious. Thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.